Hello and welcome. Uh, this is a video about pipe smoking. My name is Jared Coles. I have been a pipe smoker for uh, 12 years now. I've been making pipes almost as long as that. Uh, you can check out what I'm doing here, www.jaredcolespipes.com. Uh, today we're going to talk about five things you can do to buy the right pipe for you. Uh, and first I want to talk a little bit about why you should smoke a pipe at all. Obviously, you're interested, you clicked on this video, just go you. And, uh, and then we'll get to the, the main stuff, because this is a one part of a series about how to smoke a pipe, kind of the basics. So I wanted to talk, oh, hold on. Oh. I have one of these. You probably have one too. This thing runs my life, basically. There's probably not a moment of my waking existence that I don't have this thing within reach. It's probably the same for you. Now, the average American spends at least 10 plus hours on their phone or in front of a screen every day. I don't know about you, but I'm finding more and more that the things that are actually on the screen are influencing my brain. There are companies and scientists whose whole, the whole point of their career is to program addiction into these things. They are built to suck you in. They are built to create dopamine pathways around their products or services or apps or um, so the 24-hour news cycle, pornography, sports updates, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all these things are designed, and I mean that very literally, designed to create channels in your brain, dopamine pathways that are addictions. And the content that you're seeing is also designed to activate like your medulla oblongata, all this crazy stuff, they know how to manipulate you with images and words. So, you are being constantly inundated. You are being constantly programmed towards addiction. You are being constantly distracted. And so, I'm finding more and more, and the more people I talk to, the more this becomes very clear to me, that pipe smoking is a way to shift your mindset. It's a way for you to step away from that and to just let your brain be, to let yourself be. Uh, the Native Americans had many uses for tobacco. All of them were spiritual. Um, so, in watching these videos, I hope that pipe smoking can be a form of meditation for you, a form of prayer, a form of camaraderie, uh, that is very undigital, because um, we're going to need that, because the world isn't going to get less digital, and we're going to need a way to maintain a kind of uh, high-level view of life, rather than getting sucked in and doing this all day long. Um, and, you know, VR is coming. Uh, it's already here. And can you imagine what our kids and grandchildren are going to be living with in 50 years, 100 years? It's going to be nuts. We as humanity need something that allows us to disconnect from that and kind of get in touch with both our physicality and our spirituality, wherever you want to call it. That is not having, there, where there's no one influencing you. Where you can actually just think a thought without having it been like directly planted in your brain by a manipulative person. So, anyways, I think that's why you should smoke a pipe. That's why I smoke a pipe. Plus, it's super tasty. Now, let's get to the main chunk. Five things you can do to buy the right pipe for you. Hey, that rhymed. That wasn't on purpose. <laughs> Alright, the first thing you can do is buy a corn cob pipe. They are by far the best value they deliver the best smoke for the least amount of money. However, they don't last very long. You'll get anywhere between 10 to 50 uh, smokes out of them. 
And if you can nurse them along gently, you'll get more towards the 50 side. Um, and if you're really aggressive and you're, you're not quite sure what you're doing and you're smoking too quickly, you're going to burn it out. But it will burn out eventually. Uh, that material, the corn cob, is not real great at standing up to the constant combustion and heating and cooling that happens in a pipe. But they are very tasty. And they're great for tasting different tobaccos, and they're great for giving to friends, traveling with, etc. So they're just very versatile and inexpensive. So, highly recommend it. Buy a corn cob pipe, number one. Number two, once you've bought a corn cob pipe, you and you want to continue smoking a pipe for you know into the future, and you want something that you can hand off to your children or grandchildren or just keep around for the next. 20 to 50 years, you need to buy a briar pipe. Briar is the wood that um, everybody sort of settled on about 200 years ago that was going, that has turned out to be the best wood for smoking a pipe. It's just so dense and so neutral tasting uh, that it's just perfect. So you need a briar pipe, briar pipes that smoke on a level with corn cob pipes start about $60. Anything below that, I found 90% of the time they actually smoke worse than a corn cob, significantly worse. So I would just go ahead and skip over that anything under about 50 or $60 and go right for a reputable pipe. You know, so, um, and we'll talk, this is, no, I'm just getting ahead of myself. $60 to $150, you're going to get a factory made pipe, a good factory made pipe. I recommend that's a great starting. Uh, price bracket. Uh, jumping up to 150 to 500 dollars, you're going to get kind of a entry level artisan pipe. And uh, by artisan, I mean kind of a handcrafted or a really high end factory pipe, uh, such as like a Dunhill is a really old name. Actually, I think they may be out of production now. We'll see. That's another video of pipe gossip. Um, what you're looking for, though, is reputation here, because in that price range, there's a lot of new people um, who are getting started, and that may mean that their quality is not as high as what they think it is, so they're pricing a little too high. Once you get into the $500 range, you are going to find that almost any pipe you buy is going to be excellent. It's going to have really great craftsmanship, it's going to have really great smoking qualities, and it's going to be beautiful. So it, anywhere from 500 up to you know 10,000 or whatever you want to pay, uh, if that's uh, something that's interesting to you. Now, okay, so you've budgeted. You know the budget you need for a pipe. So I, if you don't have 60 dollars for a pipe, I recommend just waiting until you do. Don't go and buy that 20 dollar pipe. Just stick with your corn cobs for now. All right. So you bought a corn cob. You liked it. You want another one. So you're budgeting for it. Let's get to some construction basics, pipe construction basics. So I made this yesterday for this video. All right. This is uh, a cutaway of a pipe. A very simple pipe, but it illustrates it nicely. This is a stem, pipe stem. This is what's called a stummel, the wooden part. Uh, this is the bowl and the shank, and this is the mortise tenon interface between the stem and the stummel, tobacco chamber, and airway. That's pretty straightforward. Um, one thing, the best tool in your arsenal when you're going to buy a pipe is to buy some pipe cleaners, and there's a pipe cleaner test. If you can't put a pipe cleaner through the pipe, through the airway, and have it poke out at the bottom of the bowl, you're in good shape. Now, you always want the airway to come out at the bottom and the center of the chamber, the tobacco chamber. Always. One sixteenth of an inch here or there won't make a difference, but if you can like look down there and it's obvious that it's off to one side or the other, or it's raised up above the bottom of the chamber, it won't smoke that well. Just I guarantee it. So, when you're doing the pipe cleaner test, look also for the bottom and the center airway. So a straight pipe like this should always pass a pipe cleaner test. There are bent pipes 
such as this, this is one of my personal pipes, that you, um, when they're more expensive, you can engineer them to pass a pipe cleaner, but it does require some more knowledge and work, and that's pr put into the price. Um, if you're buying a under $150 pipe and you want a very deep bend in your pipe, you're not going to get a pipe cleaner to pass it, most probably. And that's just something you, you're going to have to live with. It's going to cause some gurgle because of the fluid dynamics inside of the pipe. So, with that being said, I recommend straight or slightly bent pipes for your first pipes. Okay, um, look for the bit. If you see any burrs or sharp edges, just don't buy that pipe because it's going to be uncomfortable when you put it in your mouth, okay? All right. You bought a corncob pipe. You liked it, so we're budgeting for another one, a real one. And now you know some about how to buy a pipe and, and the construction basics, the engineering basics that you need to know to confidently buy a pipe. All right, number four, you need to buy a pipe that has some reputation behind it. So whether that's your friend who's been making pipes for a couple years or an old factory that's been around for 150 years, you want to know that that person or company has enough knowledge to build a good pipe. So ask your local tobacconist. Make sure your local tobacconist smokes pipes. If the guy behind the counter has never smoked a pipe before, just listen to me, all right? Or listen to somebody else who knows who smoked a pipe for a long time. So make sure you're finding a pipe with some pedigree. Um, if, even if it's a $50 pipe, but it comes from a good source, there's a reasonable guarantee that you're going to have a good smoking pipe. So just make sure you're getting something that you can have a reasonable assumption of quality. All right, so you bought a corn cob. You liked it, so we're budgeting for a new one. You learned some pipe engineering basics. You're going to buy something of quality because you know the reputation of the maker. And just go ahead and buy the pipe. I have a few recommendations here. Uh, number one, always buy your first few pipes in person. So when you're kind of farther on and you've bought a few pipes before and you know the reputation of the people you're buying the pipes from, you can buy online or, you know, via a website or, you know. So once you know the reputation of the people involved, you can buy online if you're confident in, in that. Um, but for your first few pipes, you need to be able to do that pipe cleaner test. It needs to slide easily from button to bowl, okay? You put the pipe cleaner through. If it sticks in the middle, it's not a good sign, okay? So you need to be able to be physically present to do that test before you buy a pipe. The other thing is, sleep on it. So just, it's really helpful to have your brain process the pipe you want overnight. It's it's kind of a powerful tool, and that way you won't buy impulsively. Once you know what you like, what works for you, you have, if you, you can sort of buy more impulsively after that because you've had some experience with different companies and different styles of pipe, and so you know what you like already. All right. So, you're on your way to creating a healthier mind space for yourself kind of unprogramming yourself. Pipe smoking is such a great way to do that. And now you have the confidence to go out and buy the right pipe for you. So I encourage you, I'm gonna light up actually. And uh, I'm gonna get started on the next video. The next video is all about how to smoke a pipe. Kind of the basics, I'm gonna walk you through visually how to light, how to pack the bowl, how to choose a tobacco, and how to smoke the thing properly from top to bottom. All right, see you guys later. Um, please go to my website, jaredcoalspipes.com. And on the website, you will find a PDF with all of this information in text form. 
and it's going to go through a bunch of stuff. It's quite long. There's a lot of information information in there that you you should have on hand when you're learning to smoke a pipe. Uh, so please go check that out, and I'll see you in the next video.